You are listening to a Barry Long podcast. For information about Barry Long, to download more podcasts, or to purchase any of his wide range of books, video or audio publications, visit B-A-R-R-Y-L-O-N-G dot org. That's barrylong dot org. I want to go in to emotional pain. Now this is not some pie in the sky because emotional pain is behind all the cruelty, all the greed and all the unhappiness in the world. And as we're all a party to this cruelty, greed and unhappy world, we're all a member of it, we have all known emotional pain. And to the degree that we know emotional pain, we cannot know love. Isn't that strange? So many people think they know love when their heart is broken. No, no, no. I'm talking about real love. When you have pain, as you know, it's very difficult to love. Although if your heart's broken, you would say, but I love this person who has broken my heart. But that's not true. You have loved the pain. Unfortunately, It is the human condition to love emotional pain and mental pain. Emotional pain leads to mental pain. Mental pain leads to emotional pain. We have to find a way to get rid of emotional pain. If you go out into the street today, everybody out there has got emotional pain just down under the surface, waiting for the circumstance to push the button where they know this great and terrible uh, uh, grasping uh, feeling of emotional pain and of mental pain that drives the mind nearly mad. Everybody out there, there's no one escapes. So what we're here for and why you come to me is to hear some, some truth about your life, not some airy fairy story, but some truth that I trust you will apply to your living life and not just treat it as a lecture. So I want to go into this emotional pain, a mental pain, together. And because it is the human condition, as I say, to love pain. Not physical pain, because physical pain is far different to emotional pain, isn't it? If I uh, break my arm, then I know what physical pain is. If I stub my toe, I know what physical pain is. And we can't do anything about physical pain, as it were. But we can do a great deal about emotional and mental pain. But as human beings, we don't want to. Because we love the sensation of emotions and emotional pain. It gives us a sense of self. It gives us a a sense of suffering. Now, where I come from, there is no need for man or woman to ever suffer from emotional or mental pain. Did you hear me, please? That means that when somebody dies, there is no need, the loved one, the one you love most, there is no need for you to know emotional or mental pain. When the one that you love most leaves you or departs, there is no need for you to know mental or emotional pain. It is a lie that has been imposed upon the human race by the ignorance of the human race. And of course the only reason that you come to me is to find out where is the ignorance in me who is listening to these words. Where's the ignorance in me that causes this emotional pain, which I, I, I hate, I dislike, and yet I am totally responsible for. So we've got to find out how to get rid of this emotional pain, this mental pain. We've got to start somewhere practically. Now let's have a look at it. Say, just say you've been in a partnership for 10 years living together 
say you're a man but you could be a woman and suddenly you find out that the woman that's in partnership with you has been making love to another man for a couple of years and you didn't know about it. Although you had felt pain in you, emotional pain, because you felt there was something wrong. Because emotions usually indicate or do indicate that something is wrong. Now I hope you're looking at this in your own life. Some, that's what emotions are for, to tell you that something is wrong. So, if I felt that in a relationship something is wrong by the emotion that it created in me, then I have to look at the situation and see is it in the situation that's affecting me because it is dishonest or something is wrong and I am taking everything for granted that everything's all right and it's never all right. It doesn't matter what partnership you're in. It's never, ever all right. Because you've got to be vigilant. You've got to be honest to truth and God. Everyone gets honest to their ignorance. And so they put up with it instead of getting to the bottom of it. Because if I'm emotional in a situation, it means that I have ignorance in me which I'm not facing or there's something dishonest in the situation. And that's why I have to be able to speak to my partner and she or he has to be able to speak to me with utter honesty. It doesn't matter that she's making love to somebody else. That's not the point. The point is, why is she making love to somebody else? Why? And the answer is, because I didn't love her enough, because I was ignorant, because I didn't question. I thought everything was all right, even though my emotions were going like this in certain situations. So you know what I say, that in a situation, you either surrender or you quit. You don't put up with things once you've scrutinized everything, including your own self, where all the emotion comes from. It is this, this thinking that everything's all right that ruins half the love life of the people. Please believe me, nothing's all right. You have to be vigilant without being doubtful. Vigilance is what we're giving our intelligence for. Vigilance is when we walk down the street is not to walk into the tree. Vigilance is to get out of our car without falling over something that happens to be there. To be vigilant about our whole life. But we are not very vigilant in our love life. To be vigilant. And it's not the situation that is the terrible part of it. It is, did I love enough? Or did I live like all the other couples out there? Did I just live like that? Instead of being true to love. Being able to talk to my beautiful woman, because if she's not my beautiful woman, what the hell am I doing with her? And if I'm not her beautiful man, what the hell is she doing with me? What is this pretense of marriage and pretense of partnership? What is this pretense? Are you going on with it? Are you doing it? This pretense of marriage, this pretense of partnership. Does she love me? Does she love me enough? Not just does she love me. You know mum and dad will all say, oh we love each other. And I say, but do you love each other enough? And the answer usually is no. So if she doesn't love me enough, then I have to find out what I am doing to her. Not to blame her, but where am I going wrong? My love, where is it going wrong? Where am I not loving? What am I doing that upsets her that she doesn't speak about? What am I not doing that she would like me to do that upsets her? 
Why can't I be honest like that with my love? For love means communication. You know, if I say I love a woman, then my God, I'm in utter and complete communication with her. And she with me. For she must love me means she must be able to communicate with me. And love is communication. But the sort of, the sort of traditional love, you know, that mum and dad and everyone have gone with and all your girlfriends and boyfriends are still doing all around the world. I go all around the world, you know. I speak to tens of thousands of people and it's always the same problem. Lack of love. That's what causes everyone to be unhappy and lack of love means emotion takes the place of love. Ignorance, first of all, takes the place of love and then, because ignorance always causes unhappiness, emotion arises in me when the situation breaks down. So I have to start living a life of honesty, not expecting others to be honest, for that would be wrong of me. I would have expectation of you to be honest to me. The thing is, I've got to live a life of honesty. Now, where does the life of honesty begin? It begins in here that I must be honest to love. Does that mean anything, honest to love? Honest to truth, honest to God, honest to life. Now, mostly that sounds like pie in the sky, but is it? For if I say I love you, then I must be able to speak to you. And you must reveal your deepest emotional secrets to me, meaning what makes you emotional. And if you can't do that, then either I don't love you enough or you don't love me enough. For the whole purpose of love is to get rid of our emotional hiding. How can I be honest to love here without making it some prayer or faith or something? How can I be honest to love? The first thing is, I must give up my anger. My anger at anything. For while I am an angry man or an angry woman, I will be emotional. And that emotion will cut me off from my love here and my woman. For does any woman want to love an angry man? Now, he's not angry all the time. But do you want to love him when he's angry? When he's hitting the wall or turning around, slamming the door? Or says, I don't want to talk about it. For God's sake, if any woman said to me, I don't want to talk about it, I say, well, you better go then. What do you think we're here for? To forget it? That's being dishonest. To love. For if we can't talk about it and get some honesty between us, we're never going to have love between us. For love is communication. Now, what are you emotional about? That's the question. For the man or the woman, what are you emotional about? What am I doing to you to cause you to be emotional? to cause you to be so disrespectful of me in the sense that you don't take any notice of me anymore like you used to. There has to be something wrong that I've done to you. There has to be something wrong that you've done or I've done, one of us has done wrong, that you don't love me like you did when we first hopped into bed together. You know, when you first hopped into bed together, how beautiful it was. Now, I'm talking to all of you. Let's not bullshit Let's just get it right for a change. When you first hopped into bed together, remember how beautiful it was and how you loved it and he loved it or she loved it? Well, I want to know what went wrong. What went wrong with it? And you've got to have the intelligence to be able to know what's gone wrong when the moment it goes wrong. You've got to be there, not in some ignorant bliss that ignores the first, the first word of criticism, the first word of pulling woman down, 
the first word of doubt, the first word of fear. When that first word comes out, your love is starting to go because behind that first word is emotion. And soon he or she will be emotional and as soon as he or she is emotional, you will be emotional. And so the disease of emotion goes backwards and forwards between us and spreads like an epidemic through the family, anywhere that's around us. And everybody will get upset and emotional and it's got nothing to do with anyone else. It's got to do with me. But why am I making you emotional? Why do you not love me like you did? And it's no good asking three years later. You've got to ask the very moment that it starts. The very moment which the human condition and the human mind always ignores. The very first word of doubt. When you're a woman, the very first word of a joke where he pulls you down and says, you're, all, you're a bit stupid, aren't you? Or you always do silly things, don't you? Some silly joking thing like that. That is an insult to woman and it makes woman emotional because it's not true. Man is always trying to pull woman down to his own stinking level. And he usually manages to. And then woman picks up from man the same rotten habits. And she goes and does things that man does and thinks is his right to do in being dishonest. And she goes and be dishonest. What chance have you got? This society stinks. And if you took the lid off every family and every house, you would find ignorance, unhappiness and emotion in every one of them. The pretenses of love are all pretenses. For to love is to love now. To have nothing arising. You know what the Buddha said, the great discovery of the Buddha? When he went into the great depths that founded a great organization of billions and billions of followers, the main important point of what he found was, I have nothing arising. Now when anything's arising in you, it is emotion. Are you hearing me? So the Buddha discovered, underneath all these emotions that he'd gathered, he was able to penetrate down beneath them and say, no more do I have any emotion arising in me. For the only thing that arises in me is emotion. For you can say you've got joy in you, you can feel it arising in you. Bullshit. Joy is a sensation which is there indeed, but it doesn't rise. It's there either in intensity or, or in, a, in, a, in, in a subdued way, like the joy of being alive now, which I have and which you have, of course. So subtle. And if I start to emotionalize that joy, which most people do, like, isn't it a beautiful little baby? Oh, I can hardly contain myself. Come here. Oh, a lovely, lovely baby. That's emotionalizing the love of the baby, which is a beautiful thing. And you will suffer and the baby will suffer because that, that emotion is going to go into that little baby. You don't think it does. But this is a psychic world, not just a physical world. The physical is as thin as a cigarette paper. It is a psychic world. And if I have emotion in me, then fears and doubts, which are all emotions, then that transfers to my children. And they, of course, follow me and will, I will clone them, clone myself in them in, emotionally. And they will behave like I do. And they will treat their women the same way as I do. And they will treat their men the same way as I, whoever the other party is. Always avoiding love instead of being honest to love. Now I will not have a woman who does not love me utterly. And I do not expect a woman to be with me if I do not love her utterly. That she knows that I truly love her. 
So what's the problem? What have you been doing? What have you been doing to get your heart broken? If he didn't love you enough, then it must have been evident at some time in your love life after you first went to bed together and enjoyed everything so much. It must have been evident when the tide had started to turn and that's where you've got to be honest and say, what is going on here? But before you even do that, when you first meet, you have to have an understanding of honesty between you. The very first time you meet and there seems to be some sort of attraction happening. And if it's going anywhere, the first thing you've got to get straight is, I, want, I must be able to be honest with you. And you must be able to be honest with me. If you don't start your relationship like that, you're doomed. You're absolutely doomed. There's no chance. But if you start off like that, where I can ask you, why are you angry? And you can, or you can ask me, why am you angry? For an angry man or a woman is an emotional man or woman. And emotion is part of the past, unhappiness. And love is supposed to get rid of your past unhappiness. It's supposed to. By revealing it, you know. Allowing you to reveal your, what you're emotional about. So that you have nothing arising. So we've covered a fair bit of ground there overall. Now would someone like to ask me a question in your own experience about emotion? Yes, this lady, what is your name? Yvonne, yes, Yvonne. Uh, when you talk, you are talking with all your, your insides. I am talking with all my inside, yes. Can I, how do I call it? Passion or emotion? The way I'm speaking, the lady says, do I call it passion or do I call it emotion? Now, why don't you give up calling it anything? Why don't you give up interpreting? Because that's your problem. You interpret everything. You interpret how you feel about your lover. You interpret about this and you interpret about that. And that is an error to interpret. Because the human mind and emotions interpret. There's no need for interpretation. What you should be doing is listening. Am I speaking the truth? Am I? Yes. Am I? In your experience, have I spoken the truth so far? That's all that matters. Not your interpretation of it. I am what I am. And I want you to give up interpreting and to see, do I speak the truth? That brings about the fundamental change in you. Now there is nothing worse on this earth than interpretation. Are you listening to me? The mind and the emotions interpret everything. And in love there is no interpretation. There is just the truth. And there is love. And I do not behave like Jesus is supposed to behave either. Or the Buddha and all these soft spoken gentle people. Because I talk to people who are in pain. I talk to the human condition. And the human condition is so ignorant that it can sit there and listen to a nice little story, a nice little man looking so beautiful with long blonde hair and blue eyes and being so soft-voiced and everything, and do nothing. The point is for you to waken to the truth. So you don't have to interpret it, listen to the truth. Your next question. Do you recognize that you are able to feel emotion without being able to tell the other what the emotion is? That's a fair enough question, isn't it? Because often we can't put our finger on the emotion, can we? It's just there. Such as if I was a woman and found a man being restless, I'd have to say to him, why are you restless? You're being emotional because you're restless? You don't want to be here and you don't have the guts to tell me that you don't want to be here because you're restless. Why don't you have the guts to tell me that you want to go somewhere else instead of 
vibrating your restlessness to me who loves you. Too straight, huh? And because he wouldn't be able to tell you why he was restless because it would require a great honesty for he might say, well, I want to go and make love to some woman. And could he tell you that? Not in this society. Oh, my God. So you're going to be dishonest because you can't take his honesty. He's going to trick you as much as he can. It doesn't mean that he's going to make love to another woman. It's just the feeling that he has inside of him because his mind's been working on sex and his emotions are working on sex and thinking about woman and other things. You know, could he put his finger on that? Well, I could put his finger on it because I know every man thinks about sex all the time. So that's one way we can put our finger on man's emotions and his anger. And it all, it all men's anger, you know, comes down to frustration. Every bit of anger in a man comes down to sexual frustration. Because this is the truth, you see. We get to the truth, the very living truth, down to your love, your truth, your reality we get here. And you start to see things with a bit of sense instead of with feelings. For feelings are interpretations. Are you listening to me? If I feel something, then I've interpreted something. Say someone next to me dies, someone I love. I get a feeling of pain, of, of loneliness or, or sorrow. I have interpreted their death, and so I get a feeling as being sad and sorrowful. So I get a feeling of sad or sorrow. Is their death sad or sorrowful? It can be sad to a degree but there's no need for me to interpret it as a feeling that goes on and on and on because death is the most wonderful thing that can happen on earth. It's better than life because when you have life and a baby's born, that baby's going to suffer just like you did, just like everybody does. Every newborn baby is going to suffer. Does somebody like to tell me that's not the truth? <laughs> well, then that would be ignorance, wouldn't it? For this is a world of suffering. Right? Okay, the human spirit that we are manages to get above it. We manage to overcome it. But be very careful because it's waiting for you tomorrow or the next day. Or if you love someone with attachment, indeed you are going to suffer because they're going to leave you either by death or departure and you will suffer. Is that true? Is it true? Pardon? I still like life. But I'm talking about living. And you're talking about life. Now the human race knows nothing about the difference between living and life. For life is the most beautiful thing inside of us, you know. It's there all the time. It's wondrous. It's glorious. Life is glorious. And it's never ending. But living... Well, living is a broken heart, the little children coming up being sexually interfered with, the women having to make their way through awkward youth, making love to them. Could you imagine anything worse? But you've all been through it. And uh, people breaking their heart and dishonest men. That's all part of living, not life. Life's in between where you say, oh, it's beautiful, I love life and I love love. You got it? Living is not easy, is it? No, but life is easy, isn't it? Life has no yoke, no burden, like love has no burden. But we've mixed up love with living. And living is dishonest because we've all got to cover up for our insecurities and our fears and our sexual frustration. Whereas when I become life, for I have realized life, you see, I've realized it, made it real in my body. I have... Therefore, I've realized love. For well, life is love and truth and God and even death. So I've realized death, for I know there is no death. Now, that's why you're here with me. What would be the good of coming to someone who hadn't realized life or God or truth or death? be no point. Don't worry, you're getting it. Difference between life and li life and living... Right. Living is painful, living is experience, living is attachment to the people that I love, then they've got to die or depart. 
and my attachments, which is an emotion, stretches like that. And I know the terrible pain of emotion. Whereas if I loved them, I would not be attached to them. I would love them without attachment. And that's what we're here for. To learn how to love without attachment. That's life. Freedom. To love without attachment. To love all the way. Not holding back anything. Because love doesn't hold back anything. It gives everything to the man or the woman. And that's freedom. To be able to give all your love. Imagine to this lady who asked the question. To be able to give all your love. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Wouldn't it? Of course, every woman in the room would say, that's all I want to do is to be able to give all my love. But how can she? With man in his present condition, unless he has lived the divine life as I teach it, and he starts to come to his senses and be a real man, then he can love her. And she says, yes, you love me, and I love you for it. But man as he is, out there, (laughs) he'll never take your love. You know that already anyway, don't you? Hmm? I know. Of course you know, because I'm talking in your experience. We're having an intelligent discussion. And that wakens you up to the woman that you are. This wonderful, wonderful creature called woman, who's intelligent, whose basis is God itself. You know, God only comes into existence through two things. Another thing the world knows nothing of, although it's so obvious. God is a spirit, and we do not know what spirit is, except that it is enormously, gigantically, impossibly intelligent and beautiful and right and true. And that, that intelligence comes into existence through two things, two forms, man and woman. So every woman is God in female form and every man is God in male form. That's it. So when you know and you feel and you know that you want to give your love, you want to give the love of God in you to the man. And his desire is always to take it from you, to give you all his love so that you will give it to him. And then God in form is making love to God in form. That's what it's supposed to be. But the form's separate them in this existence, but the love can bring them together. Ah, yes. Now, did somebody else, we're going into emotion, yes, uh, oh, hello, it's uh, Amanda? Yes, Amanda. A, man, a man's nature is not to be with one partner, yes? So for a woman, and especially for an intrusive woman, because of the, the restlessness or just no... Is it impossible for him to stay to a woman for any period of time before the restlessness comes up in him? No, it is impossible for him in his present state to stay with a woman for long. And, of course, he's put that into woman too because man has put his restlessness and his sexuality into woman and to the degree that she has taken on the sexuality of man, she becomes restless too and she can't stay in a relationship for long. But mainly it's man. But the man that I'm talking about is the man who, when he finds a woman and she finds him and they're both attracted to each other, that he stays with her because they both agree we enjoy being together are you listening we enjoy being together do we not yes I love to be with you I want to be with you as often as I can don't you yes I do and uh, once that happens that you have what I call my old fashioned way wooed each other or he has wooed you instead of hopping into bed which is the popular practice which is why Love is in such a mess in our generation and getting worse and worse because everybody hops into bed. You know, on the movies, they know each other for two days and they hop into bed or even for 12 hours. The hero and heroine is in bed 
And in our own society, everybody expects to hop into bed within the first date or the second day. Now, you can't do that. You know, that spreads, that spreads restlessness and unhappiness, particularly in woman. And it makes man continue to be restless and to go from woman to woman. So woman has to be in charge of these things. You have to be in charge of love and get the man to woo you because you are attracted to him, he's attracted to you. He must love to be with you. For God's sake, if he doesn't love to be with you without making love to you for a month, let's say, uh, what's the good of being with him? When he makes love to you, I tell you, that won't last. Because the first thing is to find out if the man loves to be with you. Not to get his, get his body into yours, because that, that will soon corrupt you. So you must find out first if he suits you, and you suit him. Now once you've established that, and if one thing leads to another and you make love, the man has to be on the basis that he is with you. Not a commitment, for God's sake, we don't want commitments. But the woman knows that the man loves her. And as soon as he shows any sign of not loving her, she says, right, out you go, now. Now. He said, what did I do? That's it, you did nothing, now out. (laughs) She's got to be able to do that to him or say, unless you stop this behavior, unless you love me, I don't want anything to do with you. Now this is a different sort of woman to what we've got out there in the world. And it's a different sort of man too who says, yes, I'll take you on, I love you and you can get rid of my emotions and I'll get rid of yours as best we can through love together. And let's do this thing. But that requires him to go right into the love of you, to give up all his thoughts about doing other things and what he wants. If he wants other things then he's not going to make it. And you're not going to make it either. You've got to love. And of course your emotions will rise in you because love is supposed to penetrate to the depths of your subconscious, which is your emotional self. And, of course, it stirs up all sorts of things, particularly physical love. Nothing stirs it like physical love. Well, you know that because that's an entry into your body by both of you, an entry into a body, and there's hidden things down there which love stirs up so that it can come up and be faced by the both of you, and there's some very hairy things happen emotionally between you. And there can be some great despair at times because the reason for love is to take the old emotions out of the woman and the old emotions out of the man. And of course, there's a hell of a lot of it down there. But through love and, 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 uh, and the woman being vigilant, and the man too, because he's got to be vigilant of the woman, something great can come out of it. And when it's finished, it will be finished. Okay. But something will have been done and you will have been true to love and the man will have been true to love and we do not know how long love lasts. But if I take you for granted, woman, it's not going to last and it won't last for me with the next woman either because I'll get up to all my same old tricks. So it's up to us to take responsibility for love when we start a relationship. And the first thing to remember is honesty. I must be able to tell you if you do something that irritates me, that it's something that, that hurts me inside, I must be able to tell you immediately when you're doing it, not three months later. Because that doesn't work, that's how the human race works. No, we've got to do it as beings. I must be able to tell you. And you must be able to take it without justifying or, or uh, justifying yourself or your actions. You mustn't speak back. You must just listen to me because if I have an irritation in me by something that you do and I am open and honest about it, then you will immediately endeavor to get rid of that if I love you and if I, you hear that I am being right. And the same with you to me. Then we don't have emotions that gradually build up bit by bit. And over here we start wondering, well, what's come between us? What's this that's come between us? We love one another and what's come between us? Well, all the little irritations that have disturbed emotions, 
all the, all the joking, uh, uh, pulling down of woman, all the, uh, the harshness of words, all those have created a shadow that comes between us. And our human mind, which is ignorant of love, knows nothing whatever about love, says, what has come between us? when it is our own dishonesty has come between us. So we're continuing our investigation in our own experience into emotion which destroys love proportionate to emotion's intensity. And I trust that we've been discovering something about what love is between man and woman. And you'll never love each other unless you're honest. You'll never really love each other. You'll get attached. But if you're honest, there's a greater chance of you're not being attached because you're being true to something else. You're not being true to the woman. You see, I don't want my woman to be true to me. I want my woman to be true to love and true to truth. That means that you must always put the love of truth and the love of love first before the man or the woman. Now you're hearing me. We're talking about the purpose of love, you know, between two people. If you love the man or woman first, then it is not going to last. You must love the truth first. Now what is the truth? Because I've got to keep repeating this because it slips off the mind. You know, it just slips off. If I am true to love and I love you, I love this woman in front of me, say, and she loves me. If I am true to love, then I must not be true to her because if she's emotional, she'll be saying, why don't you love me? Because emotion is, un emotion is insecurity, you see. And emotion always wants to be loved and it demands love and reaches out for love. Now, if I loved the woman, I'd probably give in to that, you know, because her emotional demand was so great I couldn't stand against it and i go and make love with her. Now that's being putting the woman first because uh, if I put God first or truth first, I'd say, not on your life. You don't demand love from me ever as I will not demand it from you. So don't you dare demand love from me. Then what am I being true to? The woman or am I being true to truth? Because it's not going to do the woman any good for her to get away with her emotion and demand love which comes from an insecurity in her, an uncertainty in her, a lack of love in her. So it's not going to do her any good. So the thing is to be true to love and say, stop, now cut it out. I love you, but I do not love your emotions. I do not love yourself but I will help you all I can. And she might say this to me, you see. That way I'm but putting the woman first. I'm putting truth or love or God first. Now if I said that out there, nobody would know what truth or love or God was, would they? How can I put truth or love or God first? Now I'm going to tell you again, okay? Because it slips off the mind. If someone said, how do I put God first? You'd be amazed how it slips off the mind. You do not put the man or woman first, meaning you do not put their self first because the self will come up in them and they will be demanding or emotional or angry or moody. And you can't, you can't love that. I don't care who you are, you can't love that. Although many women have said to me they love their emotions and they love being emotional. And I say, poor man, where's your poor man? Let me hear from him. So you have to be true to love. And love does not have emotion in it. Love does not have demand in it. Love does not have impatience in it. Love does not have mood, uh, uh, resentment, all those emotions. Love doesn't have that. So if I'm true to God, I certainly won't have it in me. You know, if I won't have it in her, how the heck can I say, well, I'm moody? You know, or I'm angry or I'm resentful. What a, what a terrible thing that would be to not have it in her and yet to have it in me. 
And that's what we do, isn't it? We let ourselves off the hook and accuse others when it comes back to taking responsibility. This is being true to God. This is being true to love. This is being true to truth. You're listening to me. I must not allow myself to take over my system. This is God's system, you know. I am God in male form and you are God in male or female form and I must not allow this stinking self to come up and usurp usurp my body and my system. That's obviously wrong. So to continue our investigation into this uh, emotion in your experience, let's continue the questions. Would somebody like to ask me a question about this in your experience? Yes, uh, it's the Dharma, isn't it? Dharma, yes, Dharma. Okay, so Dharma says that he's uh, been with my teaching for some time but he's never been able to have a conversation because uh, his last lover told him that he was being dictatorial because he says, well, this is how love is and she says, uh, well, uh, you're trying to tell me things. Is that right, something like that? Yeah. Now, uh, Dharma, you, uh, I've got to tell you that you've got to get it finer than that. Before you start a relationship, you have to have an intelligent conversation in which I agree that I have no right to be unhappy, that if I do get unhappy, I, you have every right to ask me why I'm unhappy and for me to communicate that to you, and you the same. Otherwise, this relationship is going nowhere and I trust that it is going somewhere. But we've got to have this honesty between us, which is communication, which is love. Now, can we do this together? Which means that in the middle of one of our emotions, and the other says, why are you emotional? What is the problem? I'm likely, because I'm in emotion, I'm likely to start justifying my emotion, which is what we do. And then I'll say, well, you're dictatorial, you're trying to tell me something. And I'd say, I'm not trying to tell you anything, I'm asking you a question which we agreed in the start, uh, why are you emotional? Uh, it doesn't leave much room, you see, once we've agreed that that's the way it is, but emotion will always come up and try to justify or accuse or blame. Always will. But according to the love between you, you can roll with it, you know? If the other is unreasonably emotional and you love her or him, um, you can roll with it and you know that this is a passing thing, this is just something they're dealing with and that's all right. But you've got to have this honesty at the start and I suggest that you didn't have that. That's true, that's true says Dharma, good. So again, don't let it run off, roll off the mind. As soon as it starts to get sort of serious and you're going somewhere, you couldn't help but have a serious conversation if you live my truth, you know, live this truth that is your truth if it's truth for you. You couldn't help but have it and say, well, you know, how many people just meet, you know, and they fall in love and, uh, and uh, just a relationship starts and where's the intelligence? You know, is there any intelligence in this love that just comes together and enjoys being together and then goes to bed together and doesn't have a communication of honesty? Is there any intelligence in it? And the answer is no, it's ignorance. So human love across the board is ignorance because it hasn't got honesty first. Do you hear me, Dharma? Unless you... See, people say, we all know that everybody wants love and everybody loves love. And I come along and say, no, you don't want love first. You want an honest love, not a dishonest love. But everyone's love ends up, because they're not honest, it ends up as a dishonest love. Because they weren't honest in the beginning. 
And to be honest to God or love or truth, right? I'm going to tell you again what it is. To put your love of truth, which is I have no right to be angry in this relationship. I have no right to be resentful of other people. I have no right to be negative in this, any of these matters. I have no right, but I might get that way because I'm not perfect. But if I do, would you please ask me why I am this? And I will endeavor to answer as honestly as I can what the problem is in me. And if I can't see it, I will tell you I can't see it. Perhaps you can tell me what my problem is because often the other one does see it. And if they're not accusing or blaming, often they can tell you the truth. Yes, you're uh, concerned about this or that or your second last lover. That's what your problem is. I know that, says one of them. Well, I don't know that I am. You know, and that can, as long as there's no emotion or accusation in it, then you can get it straight and you help each other to get these emotions out. But as soon as you accuse or blame the other or justify your own reactions, the honesty goes. So, anybody else like to ask me a question, please? Yes, sir. I can see the insecurity. Have you got the emotion in your body of insecurity? Yes. yes. Where is it? Around the, around the solar plexus, which is around the stomach area, the solar plexus, the chest. Right. So that's where she's got her insecurity feeling in the ex existential body. Yes. Yes. I feel a lack of stillness which stops me from expressing itself. I don't feel I have enough stillness to stop the insecurity expressing itself. Well, you know, all insecurity and everything comes from lack of love or not being loved. That's where it comes from, finally. The fear of love, the, the not being loved... Uh, well, you can't have a lack of love in yourself, really. You, uh, uh, you are love, and what's been imposed on that love is uh, uh, a lack of love or a fear of love or uh, a wrong partner. Why don't you go and get a brand new partner? Next time you'll move the brand new one. You know, it doesn't matter if he doesn't know anything about the spirit, as long as you start off, as soon as there's any form of attraction, you start off by saying, now honestly, this is how I, the only way I can love. And uh, why don't you do that? Why don't you try a different lover? You know, all lovers are not the same. We go on often for year after year and we think it's our fault or something and the thing is that you don't fit each other or you don't suit each other. Well, why don't you try that sort of solution as long as you're moved in love but then your fear will turn you, you'll be looking over, there could be a, a, a field of Adonises in front of you. <laughs> but your fear would look straight over and say, I can't see any man around. <laughs> so the next time you're moved, you know, towards someone or something or something happens, you just remember what I said, just keep that inside of you. Because not all lovers suit each other, you know. We got into this habit of lovers suiting us. And uh, unless we're going forward, and by going forward I mean that we're going deeper into love and I'm getting rid of my insecurities and, and I'm loving her or him more and he's loving her or him more and, and we're both going together and we have a greater sense of reality and life Unless we're going forward like that, it's possible we've got the wrong partner. Even though we love him or her. But are we reaching each other? Is it working? You know, we've got to look at these things, haven't we? Because there's nothing like the intimacy of two bodies. And they, they can fit, but perhaps they don't fit forever. Perhaps we think that when they fit, they fit for now, but they don't fit forever. But I would say that if you're fit at the beginning in making love, if your body's fit then, 
and you continue to live the divine life, I see no reason why you shouldn't fit all the time. It is the emotions that come up between us, which we bury when we first meet each other and we're on our best behavior. They eventually will come up, our resentments and our, our fears and everything. And they usually separate us. But it's not always that two people actually fit. You would know that. You've all made love where it was just, you know, it was just ordinary. You've all done that. Well, you didn't fit, did you? Nothing wrong with that, but the fact is you didn't, didn't really fit so that you resonated in each other and you just resonated in the bodies where that you didn't exist and there was no emotion and no thought and you just sort of became one in that, in that action of physical lovemaking. Now, I'm not saying to say it's always going to be like that or it's always like that in the beginning, but it's got to be a getting better situation all the time. Otherwise, it's a, it's a retarding situation getting worse. And then we stay attached to each other, we get attached to our room together and our, our house together or something, we get attached to that, and it's too much trouble, to be honest, to love when we don't really fit each other anymore, either due to our emotions or due to the fact that we've done all we can in each other's bodies. I mean, we've got to face the fact of things, haven't we? Eh? It's about time we did look at things. We're not saying do this or do that, but, but to look at things. Okay. Now, the fiendess is a word that I have used in my making love tapes, as those of you who have heard them would know. But I'll just explain that the fiendess, this is a psychic reality, you know, the fiendess. The fiendess is the hatred in woman for man's lack of love of her and his exploitation of her over the ages. So the fiendess is a psychic entity, as it were, that is immortal and keeps arising in woman as uh, because man still does not love her. And so he invokes the fiendess in her from time to time and any man who's met her would certainly know that's the fiendess. And every woman who has touched the fiendess in herself certainly knows that's the fiendess. But the fiendess finally has to be overcome by the woman containing this hatred of man that is psychic and endemic in woman's psyche because of his terrible treatment of her down through the ages, through using her. Um, but she has to eventually contain that hatred and if she can do that and rise above it, she then enters a place in the psyche behind the fiendess where there is a place of peace and love and the fiendess no longer troubles her or is concerned because this woman has found love inside herself. So the fiendess is a demon but a fiend is something that comes out of hell and uh, this fiendess, as a man knows who ever met her, knows that it is something that's come out of hell. And hell, of course, is nothing more than hatred, uh, a reaction to not being loved. It's an emotional reaction. It's a piece of love that is broken off by the sheer indignation of not being loved and the emotion, the love breaks off and turns into emotion and, and violence and, and sheer hatred. And then that that piece of love that's turned to hatred of man has to be then loved back to become part of the woman so that it's absorbed back into her as love. And now that's what love's about. That love's supposed to heal all the wounds and bring all those emotional contractions of love that have become emotion that were love uh, to release the tensions and violence in them and bring the woman back to being whole. And same with the man. Sex is 
Right, if I could just tell the people that Yvonne is saying that uh, when you go to bed, uh, you're in the bed and the bed is sort of filled with the feelings of sex because of your previous experience of sex in bed. Yes, that's what you're saying? Yes. yes. I find it very difficult place to get into my love. You mean in bed? Because of the condition. Because of the conditioning associated with it, the previous experience, because we are creatures of previous experience. And uh, so, well, you're not just, uh, you don't have to just make love in bed, do you? And I think also that love begins perhaps in the kitchen where the man comes up behind you and kisses you on the shoulder and on the neck and, uh, and actually smells you, not that he's trying to smell you, but with his nose, and you know that he, has a, he loves you, he loves the smell of you, and he loves the touch of you. You don't have to go to bed. That's the beginning of love, is to be able to smell and touch a woman with love and not with the grabbing of sex, so that she is reassured by the man that there is not sex here, that there is love. And uh, the idea is to get rid of that conditioning in the bed by being in the bed and him being able instead, before he even enters you, there should be a great, uh, a, a long period of what in the making love tapes I call love play, not, not uh, foreplay. Now you'll notice in the Western world and all the magazines they talk about foreplay, which is typical of them because foreplay is to get the woman excited so that she's going to give him back some sexual feelings. Whereas love play, love play doesn't have working towards anything. To love play with a woman is to enjoy it as though you were inside of her. To just she'll do it without working towards some object like man does to get inside of her and come or something. So foreplay is aimed at that and that's sexuality, whereas love play, and a woman responds to love play because she knows the man's not going towards anything, he's just sufficiently uh, loving with her now uh, that there's not working towards anything, although something might happen, but that's how you tell the difference. And the more that you're in bed and can uh, and have love play, or he kisses you, or fondles you without sex grabbing him, and he's in a hurry, <laughs> or he's he's impatient, which is all signs of sex, that conditioning will disappear from you. But indeed, in every woman is this fiendess, this demon, whose hatred of man down here in the psyche is very, very evident in every woman uh, if, you, if she's touched enough. She screams. Do you know her? Have you ever screamed from that place of the fiendess inside you at a man? Have you ever hated, hated man's sexuality enough to feel that you hate him? No, because I always felt the love under it. I've always felt the love what? I uh, felt the love under the... Uh, under. Behind the sex. Yes, behind the sex. But I always felt there is more under it. That is true, there is more. But on top of that is the sex and the and the... The, that part of the psyche that has been exploited by, uh, by, by man, of woman, and he has not loved her, he's used her, and that is in all women, more or less, if it's touched enough. If she loves a man enough and he so-called betrays her or does something else, it is likely to rise in her as a great hatred, not necessarily of this particular man, but it comes from the ages in her. For we are psychic creatures who represent the ages of man and woman. That's what we are. We're not just yesterdays. So, okay, so it is important for the man to love you, to get rid of your conditioning, your sexual experience. Only love will do it. And he has to love you rightly. So it does demand a great deal of the man to be able to give up his sexuality 
And the best way for him to do that is to truly love you. If he truly loves you, if he loves you and says, I just love you, I don't care about anything else, I just love you. When a man says that, then, then you're being loved and your conditioning will be dissolved gradually. Uh, so I feel that it's, you're putting it really on the man and it's so hard to come to that point. So do you suggest I should give up? No. Oh. No. Oh. I I see. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, I'll never give up, no. God willing, you know. Because, uh, and the men respond, you know. There are couples in this room where the man is adoring, loving the woman. Now that's very new, you know. And uh, my teaching is always pushing man and pushing woman further and further towards God, you know, because love is God. And there are men in this room who are actually adoring, adoring the woman because they love her so much. Now, this can only happen at the right time in man and woman. And the woman, because they are women of love, is not compromising with any of their sexuality because man or in his adoration and everything has to have sexuality because he's got to learn about love but if he's willing and he loves her then it can be done but he's only, if he's only half willing and half loves her it's very difficult then that I am bringing the adoration of woman into this world now on the basis that woman is God in female form God woman, right? No arguments about homosexuality, about this, about transvestites, about transgender, about trans something else, sexual, and about lesbians. And you, uh, No talk about that. Here is God, here is woman, and she is God in female form, without the complication of sex. So, man can adore her if they only are attracted enough and he's prepared to give up his distractions because he adores her is not difficult. Now, all women that I am teaching, I am saying, you must not go with a man sexually or make love with him if he doesn't love you enough. He's got to love you enough, otherwise you don't have any more love making in your life because otherwise it'll be sex if he doesn't love you enough. But if he loves you enough, that's great. And, you, and he, he loves you and uh, cares for you in the sense of he woos you, he loves to be with you. He doesn't have to be perfect then, as long as he loves you enough. But finally, such love in man that he will adore woman because woman is God in, fi in female form. And there's nothing more adoring than God, right? Love. But we've got it all mixed up. We've got... Love for man, love for woman, woman for woman, man for man, love of my cat, love of my car. You know, we've got love of everything, love of my children, as though they came before my woman or my man. Children should never come before man or woman, never ever. It is the love of my woman comes before my children, always, or the love of my man. Otherwise, your love's finished. Now, the basis is that only God is, can be worshipped. See? I can adore woman, but I cannot worship her. For only, the, only God is worshipful. But woman, as God in female form, can be adored. Starts off with love and then uh, an adoration of the beauty of her. See, the beauty is love. But man is in his mind. He has to become his whole body. And that's why I talk like this and push man to start to find love. And when you do love, for Christ's sake, don't run from it. You know, you've got to go into it. You've got to go into the fire. Uh, you can't be like man has been because your independence is threatened. You know, man's greatest fear is he's going to lose his independence. That's what all this is about. He's a terrified of losing his independence by loving a woman, truly loving her. He goes, oh, as soon as it gets a bit too much where he's going into, he's got to give up so much 
of himself, he says, my independence is going. And he wants to make excuses and, uh, and justify his other activities for not going in. So we are talking about man loving woman and woman not compromising, right? That's what I've been saying. Now, here's a letter. And I get, I've had numerous letters like these over the last two and three years. Numerous? Well, I suppose I must have had 50 or 60 letters like this from brave women. So I want to read you this to let you know. And this I got today. Oh, yes, yes, today. So the lady must be here because it was delivered. And, of course, who she is doesn't matter. It's what she writes for us. I acknowledge that by placing myself before your searing presence and my doing my best to live the divine life as you teach it, I have finally been able to do what no woman in my long genetic line of Italian Roman Catholic women has been able to do. Is there anything worse as a background? <laughs> By grace, I have had the clarity and courage to let go of my marriage and put honesty to love first. I have let go of the father of my child, broken up the family and put honesty to love first. I have let go of my hopes and fears and hurts and put honesty to love first. Who I thought I was as wife, mother, lover and citizen is gone. In dying to my attachments and facing the emotional pain, to my astonishment, the fiendess arose, fierce and fanged, from a wounding as ancient as man's first movement away from his beloved and towards his self. The fiendess arose from molten psychic lava and was outraged at man's lack of honesty and courage to love and a doubting woman who has allowed herself to compromise her love for so long. But most of all, of course, she appeared to awaken the woman in me who will never again settle for compromise. Eventually, I was able to contain the fiendess who, as she sank back into the ashes of time, imparted her knowledge born of emotional pain and self-betrayal. That is, yes, woman is here in form once more. It is I, woman, who am utterly responsible to love and God and truth beyond all else, beyond any man or self-consideration. This body is here to serve love. I am deeply grateful to thee by being noble man, Barry, Woman is being restored to her place of love and integrity. I can sense the earth herself heaving a sigh of relief as yet one more being makes a place for love. Praise the stars and thee, yours in love and gratitude. Well, it's amazing that the women have stood up in my meetings and written to me to say I have ended a farce of a marriage or a relationship at 25 and 20 years they just can't stand it anymore because they have heard, I am not loved enough and I will not stand this pretense anymore. It's amazing. And the strength they get from it, you know. The strength that comes from being true to love and breaking <coughs> associations that have no true love in it, just companionship and, uh, and uh, habit and uh, a fear of, of uh, breaking up something that would break the comfort and convenience. They do that and they are courageous. And, uh, and it's the same with single women, not just marriages, of course. Uh, a single woman to break this thing where man is using her and not loving her enough, finish with him, finish with him. And the same with woman for man, finish with her, end of it, end of it. I will not ever compromise love again. I am here for love indeed, but I will not play around with emotions and games unless I am loved enough, both of us. So, uh, that's a fine letter, and uh, I'm pleased to say that I get numbers of those.
Now there's a new love that I am bringing to this earth. A new realization of love. And you don't have to worry that you've got to remember anything because this love that I'm bringing into the world rises up from within, from the being, the being of love. And it informs the consciousness and informs the awareness and gradually a change starts to happen in the individuals. It never happens in the masses. The masses are doomed forever and ever to be born and to die, to be born and to die until gradually a million years further down somebody comes to some consciousness of God or love. But otherwise, it's always the individual who has to realize God or love. It's not the person next to you. You can't help the person next to you. You can answer their questions. But whether they've realized God has got nothing to do with it. The only one who lives and who's real is I in that body listening to these words. I am the only one. I am the only one who can be responsible for love and I am the only lover. And that's called responsibility, isn't it? All the time we keep going into the love of man and woman because if, it, if you can't love woman, you're never going to be a complete man. And that's what I talk about Eastern masters, you see. Eastern masters, many Eastern masters, Tibetan, Buddhists and the various ones have realized the truth of God within. Now that's a wonderful and a very rare state to have realized God within. But where I come from, that's only a beginning. That's half the story. Because where love is needed, where the love of God is needed, is in between man and woman's love. That's where all the pain and agony is in existence. Now I'm not concerned with God who is out of existence. I have realized God and God's okay, right? God's fine. Thank you very much, Barry. God's fine. I don't have to do anything about God because I am so grateful, so, so wonderful of its beauteous state. Uh, I am in that state, right? Now that's great because I know God's okay. But man and woman who are God in existence is not okay. That's the flaw in it all. In existence, man and woman, God as man and God as woman is not okay. And would you try to tell me it's okay? And would all the Eastern masters who have realized God try to tell me it's okay in existence? Now they might say, and quite rightly, it doesn't matter. God's in charge and it doesn't matter. And that's the truth. Nothing matters. As long as I have realized God, I can just walk around and it doesn't matter. But... If I am going to be concerned with love in existence as man and woman, like you all are, like everybody is, then to realize God and uh, to realize God as wonderful as it is is only half the story. I have to then, where I come from, bring that love through this body into existence and uh, inform man and woman, and if I am a man, inform woman by my divine love that this is divine love, this is God, and I know that I have been loved by God in form. Now let's get it straight. When man gives up his self, his, uh, his human self, that is his angry self, his, his unhappy self, that's all his human self, when he gradually gives that up, I tell you, God is present in him. The same with woman. When she becomes absence of feelings, absence of emotions, absence of this, that is God in female form. Why not? Why not? Where else is God? You can't show me God. You can pray to God. Well, where do we pray? Up here somewhere. And I understand the impulse to pray up there, but it's not up there at all. It's down there. And God is in me. And my job is to bring the God that I have realized, the love that I've realized, all of you, into this existence where there is very little love. So we've been into all that area, haven't we? I've touched on everything that I possibly can in the time allotted to us about man and woman's love. And I have told you the ultimate truth is that every woman is God in female form, and every man is God in male form. That's the ultimate truth. If you want to come down here, where all the complications start, 
you can come down the pyramid and you can argue and you can argue about love of this and love of that and you've got a whole pyramid of complication. But when you go up the pyramid, you come finally to man and woman as God and then when they come in union, in the union of love, somehow or other, God is realized. The pleasure, the wondrous pleasure, the wonder of love is realized. 